Welcome to my guide of TMNT Tournament Fighters for the Super Nintendo. Before we get into the tutorial, there's a few things I want to say. First off, this guide is for those who have a general idea on how to play fighting games. This is for new players as well, but if you don't play fighting games often, then don't get frustrated if you can't do some of these moves and combos shown in the video. Like many things, you'll be able to do them in time if you practice. The first few sections will be mechanics that plenty of fighting games have in general. Considering the Genesis version of this game didn't have these traditional mechanics, I figured that I might as well go over them in this version. Last but not least, I should mention the controls. In this game's options, Y is Normal Punch, X is Fierce Punch, B is Normal Kick, and A is Fierce Kick. In this video, I'll be referring to these as Light Punch, Heavy Punch, Light Kick, and Heavy Kick. You will also hear me mention the term DP. DP is short for Dragon Punch. It's a move that usually makes the user invincible during the start of the animation. It can be used when getting up and can beat normals and moves that would otherwise land. With that being said, let's get started. But oh, let's go. What? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> A normal cancel is done by cancelling a normal into another normal. A good example of this is Leo cancelling standing light kick into crouching light kick. A special cancel is when you cancel a normal into a special attack. For this example, I'll be doing crouching light kick into shedding cutter. However, not all moves can be cancelled. For example, when Leo does Crouching Heavy Punch, he is unable to cancel it into any move or any normal. Hopefully I don't have to explain what combos are. It's a series of attacks that the opponent is unable to block until the combo is over. These are done by doing normal cancels, special cancels, or even both. A good example is Leo doing a standing light kick into a crouching light kick, then a shining cutter. However, not all combos will work in the same scenario, and Wigna is a very good example. Let's do his combo of 5 crouching light punches. It may have worked on Shredder, but let's try it on someone like Asuka. As you can see, I'm unable to get 5 crouching light punches. Only 4 of them will land. So you have to take note of which combos will work on which characters. But not only that, you also have to consider if a character is standing or ducking. For instance, right now, I can do a combo of 4 crouching light punches. However, if the opposing wing nut is crouching, I'm able to do 5 crouching light punches. As you can see, it's important to consider which combos will work on which character, and if it will work while they're standing or ducking. Of course, you don't always have to do this, you can always keep a combo short, and it should probably work on everyone. So while I'm not able to do 5 crouching light punches against this wing nut when he's standing, if I keep it to 4 or 3, it should definitely work on every character. Now it's not something new to this game, there's plenty of fighting games that have situational combos depending on characters and standing or ducking, but I thought I should mention it here. Here is an example of a basic combo for each character. Oh. 
Grab loops can be done by inputting the grab motion before the No, stop, stop. It is not like the Sega Genesis version. It does exist, but it works differently this time. Allow me to explain. Oh god. No, why did that work? So let's talk about grab loops. Now, I can't mention grab loops without mentioning block stun first. And block stun is when you block an attack, and you're unable to act until the block stun ends. It might vary from attack to like normals and specials, they may have different amounts of block stun. But the main point is that in a block stun, you're unable to do anything until it's over. But there's only one problem with block stun in this game. You see, when you enter block stun, you're still able to get drawn. So in the case of Raphael, you can draw the opponent, draw a fireball and make them block it when they wake up, and then draw them out of block stun when they block it. Now here's an example of Armagon and Chrome Dome doing a grab loop and grabbing an opponent out of block stun. As you just saw, grab loops can be very deadly and can easily end a match. However, there is ways around this and it mostly involves the turtles, with a few exceptions. And this is where we get into grab immunity. First off, I should mention the backflip. All four turtles are able to do this and it is done by pressing back twice. Now during this backflip, you're actually invincible to attack, so if Raph was to go for a drill here, Leo can actually avoid it if he does a backflip, as you saw there. Not only that, but you can even block after a backflip. So I was able to do a backflip with Leo and block the attack after it ended. So what do I mean by grab immunity? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You see, when you do a backflip, you can still get grabbed out of it. So for example... However, there is something weird with this backflip. When you do it while getting up from a knockdown, you become immune to draws. I was pressing forward and heavy punch with Wrath, but for some reason, when Leo does a backflip on Wake Up, he becomes immune to draws. But there is one, or I should say, two big ex exceptions. In the case of Chrome Dome and Wingnut, when a turtle does a backflip on Wake Up, they just don't care. So yeah, while you can be immune to drills when you use the turtles on Wake Up, when it comes to Chrome Dome and Wingnut, they are actually able to draw you out of your backflip on Wake Up. So, do keep this in mind whenever you're in a scenario like this. I think we almost, uh, we pretty much almost dumped the cast. Uh, oh god.
Yep, that's right. This game has unblockables now. Oh boy, I'm thinking of this game again. Anyways, it's not like the Genesis version. It's a bit different than that. And for this video, I'll be showing the two most common examples. There might be more, but from what I know, this is the ones you see the most. So, for this example, this goes for Armagon and Chrome Dome. This works on all four turtles and war. Armagon and Chrome Dome both have a draw that sends up on its upwards. But for some reason, if you draw a projectile out when they land, they are unable to block this. And you might be thinking, okay, well maybe I will uh, do like a DP, I will like show you can out of it, or I try to do a backflip. Nope, you can't block it, you can't backflip out of it, you can't do a DP out of the projectile to like evade it and become invincible. You would get hit by this 100% as long as the projectile is hitting you right when you land. For the second and last example, this works on Shredder, Asuka, and Armagon. Now for some reason, when they crouch block, they're actually open for a split second. Very, It's very short, but for like one frame or so, you can actually hit them out of block stun. And you can do this with at least, you should be able to do this with every character, but for this example, I'm using Wrath. So let's say I want to do two crouching light kicks. Instead of just doing it back to back, if you delay the second crouching light kick for a brief moment, you can actually hit Shredder even if he's still holding down back. So as you saw there, I was able to hit Shredder even though he was blocking. And of course you also notice that it's easier said than done. But if you can get the timing down, you can lead into some combos off of this. To better explain this, let's go frame by frame. Now I am using frame advance on RetroArch, so the frame number might differ on a different emulator. We will start counting the frames right when the hit spark from Crouching Light Kick becomes visible. Okay, so here we go. The hit spark is right at Raphael's leg, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I'm going to hold down and light kick so that the second one comes out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can see he's, even though I'm still holding down back with Shredder, he's not in his blocking animation. And then the next frame, he gets hit. Now I'll show what happens when you do it one frame early and one frame late. Okay, so let's do this again. There's a hit spark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So about 12 frames. Now I'm going to hold the light kick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And as you can see, he's still blocking. Now the interesting part is if we do it one frame late. Alright, so this would be the last time we do this. There's a hit spark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now I'm going to hold the light kick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And right there, Shredder is wide open. But, because I did light kick one frame late, he has enough time to get back into his block and block the second light kick. As mentioned before, this will also happen with Armagon and Asuka. Hopefully this explains how strict the timing is to hit these three out of block stun. Like I said earlier, this might not be all of the unblockables of the game. But it is important to know that these exist, and it's definitely important to know these two specific examples as they are the most common ones in this game. I'm not really surprised that this game has actual tournaments and the Genesis version doesn't. It's just more fun to watch and play in general if I'm being honest. But now that I think of it, I wondered what would be considered hype in the Genesis version. Like what if it actually had a tournament with serious players involved? Hmm. You have to win this! You have to win for the EMP! Sanford! 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 Sanford. 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 Sanford.
Oh my gosh. Oh. Toss me like yesterday's garbage. <laughs>
Asuka and Armagon are the only characters that aren't able to do this. You can hold the first direction of a move for as long as you want, and do the rest of the motion and it will still come out. So in the case of Chrome Spark, if you hold down, then do the rest of the motion, it will still come out. Because of how story moves work, Leo will probably get his DP if he tries to do his Shining Cutter while walking forward. This won't happen if you do the move by negative edge. This is done by pressing and holding a button, then letting go of that button after doing the motion. By doing it this way, Leo can walk forward and perform his Shining Cutter instead of his DP. Even though the default controls don't use the L and R buttons, they still have a use in battle. As stated before, walking forward with Leo and then trying to do his Shining Cutter will most likely lead into his DP. But, if you hold L or R, and then do the move with any of the punch buttons, you would get Shining Cutter even if you're walking forward. If you're not a fan of by doing it with Negative Edge, then this is another option. Some moves don't require you to do the full motion. For example, Asuka's spin attack is a quarter circle back motion, but you can still do it if you start with down back, then press back and kick. His stun is not only affected by which side you're on, but also what speed the game is set on. Using normal speed as an example, Leo can combo two standing light punches on the left side, but on the right side, the opponent is able to block the second light punch since the hit stun is one frame less. On high speed 1, hit stun is one frame less. That means that Leo can't combo two standing light punches on any side. In the case of Mike vs Shredder, there is something very interesting about Mike's Dynamite Bomber. On normal speed, all of the hits will connect when performing it as player 1 on either side. But for player 2, all hits will only connect when done on the left side. On high speed 1, player 1 isn't able to connect all of the hits on either side. But now for player 2, he's able to land on hits on either side. I'm not quite sure how to explain this, so I'll just show you what I mean. In this scenario, if player 2 down does his back throw, they will be full screen apart when player 1 gets up. However, if player 1 down does his back draw in the same situation, they won't be exactly full screen apart. As you can see, player 1 still has some room behind him after the draw. Now I'm going to go over some specific bugs. These usually happen to the turtles and war. Grounded normals take 2 frames to start the animation. Now it might look like 4 frames here since I'm on retro arc, but it might be 2 or 4, but the point is, for the animation to start, it takes 2 or 4 frames. So, if I go frame advance, I'm going to hold light kick. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's a motion right there. And this only happens for Turtles and Wars, so... For some reason, only grounded normals, when they attack in the air, it's fine. But, they take 4 frames to start, so let's do it one more time. Holding light kick. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see it starts right there. When the turtles in war are drawn, their stun meter does not get resetted. For example, all it takes is three jumping heavy punches for Chrome Dome to get a stun on Leo. Now let's do two of them, and then go for a draw and try to doing it again. So as you can see, after the draw, only took two sending heavy punches. Against any other character, it would have still taken 3. 
Doing a frame perfect back draw would do a forward draw instead. So in normal cases where you do a back draw, let's say uh, back and heavy punch, if you do it frame perfect, you would get a forward draw instead. So as you can see, I pressed back and heavy punch at the last second and I still got a forward draw. Mike's kick draw turns him around for one frame. This doesn't mean much, but you can do a special move during this frame, and instead of doing it forward, he'll do it backwards. Turtle's jumping from crouch takes one extra frame. For example, with Leo, if I want to do a jump, let's count the frames. I'm gonna press K. I'm gonna hold up. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now he's in the air after four frames or so. But, if I do it from crouch, it takes five frames. So I'm gonna hold down. And now I'm holding down. I'm gonna immediately hold up. So, one, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, now he's in the air from doing it while crouching. So, yeah, it takes one extra frame for the turtles to jump from crouching. Leo has a close normal from standing light kick. And if I do it far, I'll get a different kind of light kick. But for some reason, and maybe it might be because of his size, I don't know. But against war, the turtles are unable to do their close normals. There's something I want to mention about Leo Shining Cutter. Mostly the light version and the heavy version. So it's pretty obvious that when you do the light version, the projectile is slow, but when you do the heavy version, the projectile is fast. However, let's take a quick look at the startup of these moves. So let's do the light version first. So now he's about to do it, so let's count this as frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So on the 7th frame, he gets Shining Cutter, at least for the light version. Now let's see how long it takes for the heavy version, so let's do the motion. Okay, that's frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, well considering it's retro rock, it might be different on other emulators. 13 frames for the heavy version to come out. So while the heavy version is a faster projectile, it takes much longer for it to come out when you perform the move. There's something very interesting about Shredder's Aura Crusher. At the startup, for a very brief moment, it's actually invincible to projectiles. So, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to go full screen with Leo. I'm going to shoot Shining Cutter. Now, if I do it right away from here with Shredder, I'll get hit. But, if I actually do it right when it's about to hit, he will go right through the Shining Cutter. So there it is, I'm going to wait a brief moment. And there you go. Are you tired of changing the speed every time you turn the game on? Are you tired of having to do the code to unlock the bosses in their stages? Are you tired of doing the Armagon Mirror and seeing the same two color palettes? Well throw all of that out the window, here comes TMNT Tournament Fighters Champion Edition. This version has an improved interface. No longer do you have to scroll through the characters by pressing left and right and tearing your hair out on how annoying it is. Default speed is always set to high speed 1, aka the definitive way to play. Bosses and their stages is already unlocked. Game facts? I don't think so. Gameplay is left unchanged and faithful to the original version, but most importantly, now everyone has over 10 color variations! Like look at this! Blue Leo? Red Leo? Leo in a different shade of green? Clone Leo? Even regularly! <laughs> but seriously, whether you're playing this with a friend or playing it competitively, I really recommend you try this version out. There will be a link in the description to download. Oh my god! Nice. Unlike the Genesis version, this game has many more factors to consider other than how easy it is for a character to go into a grab loop. So instead of making a tier list myself, I figured I'd show the one from newchallenger.net. 
And considering some of the tournaments I watched, I mostly agree with this list. Now whether you agree is totally up to you. You don't always have to pick the supposedly strongest character. If you're just starting, then try all of the characters and see which one you like the most. Without further ado, it's time to move on to the move list. And this time, I will include the bosses as well.
don't know the meaning of the word defeat. That's right! We never bothered to look it up in the dictionary.